Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you saw my last video, which was a recording for the My Journey podcast, you'll notice I'm in the same clobber. That's because I'm recording these at the same time. Um, if you haven't watched that video, go back and check it out. It's about three ways I uh, attain clients as a freelancer. Um, but today's uh, video is all about the Tory party in the UK. If you're watching this abroad, the Conservatives, the majority holders in government at the moment, and their marketing tactics. Now, I have spoken about Gymshark on this channel before, who are tearing up the rule book and creating some incredible uh, marketing campaigns. And the way they've built that business is absolutely fascinating. The Tories and the Conservatives are tearing up the rule book in a completely different way. Now, Politics is a very um, divisive subject. It can be quite controversial. So I'm not going to get, well, I'm going to try to avoid getting into politics and my views and that kind of thing too much here and try and speak about this from a marketing point of view. Now, I think the Tories, what they put out is rubbish. But I think it's genius. Um, now, let me explain why. On the face of it, what the Conservative Party put out across social media, um, especially, I think is poor quality. Um, I don't think it's very good, but I think it's intentional. Um, Take you quite a way back now. Um, you may remember that they put out a post in Comic Sans which I work with some graphic design. Well, I hate Comic Sans myself, but I work with some graphic designers in my role. And God, if you use Comic Sans, that is like, I don't know, doing a dump on someone's front doorstep. Like, it is horrendous. Especially to graphic designers. It's a kick in the teeth. And they must, they must have known this. Like, why do you pick Comic Sans? You have to actively choose Comic Sans. Now, if it was in like a default font, I would say this wasn't intentional. But the fact that they've gone and chosen Comic Sans means that they've done it on purpose and it's worked. It's riled people up. People have shared that post. This is back last year. It was about getting Brexit done. Um, so it's probably about 12 months ago. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the dates. But they put that out and people started sharing it. So even the people who didn't agree with the message were sharing the message because it was that bad the way it was presented. And ultimately, what they've done there is they've asked themselves a question. Do we want to get the message out or do we want to get the message out in a professional way? And they've taken the view that getting the message out is better than getting it out in the right way. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that or not, but what I will say is it's a very effective tool to use. Now, small businesses may struggle with that because you've not got a reputation or a body of people who will support you no matter what. Tory party have a body of people who will support you no matter what. And especially on that subject about Brexit, there are people who want to get Brexit done. So they don't care how that message comes across, but they will support that message. Then people, you whip up into a frenzy, start sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. The people who don't agree with your message, so the Remainers, disagree with that message. And now you, not only do they disagree with the message, you've given them it in such a disagreeable way, a way that just riles them up. They now share it, saying, look at how bad this is. The people in the middle, who are undecided, are seeing this message from the audience over here who agree with your message. And they're seeing the same message from the people over here who disagree with your message. So you're attacking the people in the middle from all sides, which is a really smart move. And this is used a lot. Um, Stephen Bartlett refers to this, um, former CEO of Social Chain, a huge social media marketing agency, agency. He refers to this in terms of personal branding and says, you've got to be controversial. Um, now, I, I, I somewhat disagree with that. Um, but then again, he's the one with the huge personal brand. 
But I would say you don't have to be controversial. You just have to have an opinion that you believe in because there are other people who are going to agree with you. But being controversial allows you probably more opportunities because by being controversial, that means you disagree with the majority, which is then going to cause a reaction. And Donald Trump is a perfect example of this. He will put something out that he knows will whip up the other side into a frenzy, but his supporters will love. And by doing that, he's doubling his exposure because both of them people are sharing that message and he's reaching new people who wouldn't otherwise see that message. So this, the people who support you double down on what you're saying and the people over here, they're never going to come across to you, but you've got them sharing your, your ideas because they hate him so much. It's exactly what the Tory party are doing. And it goes, you can see a very similar tactic with the, the slogans. So the first slogans that came out were very... You know, stay at home, protect the NHS, that kind of thing. We're very straight down the line. Keep everyone on side. You know, let's do this. But I feel that their new slogan, hands, face, space, is deliberately under par, shall we say. It's not the best they could have come up with. And I feel that is on purpose because they knew that people would share it saying how outraged they were. And at the end of the day... Um, whether or not you believe this or not, but the government have got to be seen to be protecting the public. And with that, that is protecting them from coronavirus. And their chosen message is to wash your hands, cover your face and maintain space between you and the other people. They don't care how you get that message. They just care that you get that message in front of you. And by making it so simple, so basic, they're able to whip everyone up into a frenzy and everyone starts sharing it, saying, God, look at how poor this is. Who are they paying to come up with this? All that kind of thing. But more people have seen the message. So essentially, it's worked. If you go back a couple of months, the same message was shared and they tried it with like different colours and coordinate graphics and stuff like that. That was so bad that even the people who supported them didn't really want to share it. They'd gone too far down that tongue-in-cheek bad line. Um, it wasn't very accessible and all that kind of thing. They've now relaunched that same campaign and just simplified it and made it really basic and people are sharing it. So it works really well. So, yeah, the lesson from today's video, if there is a lesson to be had, is that you don't always need to play everything with a straight back. You don't always need to play to the rules. You don't always need to be like boring maybe is a harsh word sometimes you just need to do something that catches people's attention is there something within your industry that is a little bit controversial a little bit maybe you do it differently to everybody else maybe your views on it are quite modern compared to it to everyone else in your industry whatever that is think about it how can you get that out there and cause conversation because conversation means that both sides of the the argument are getting involved but when you're just sharing something and only and it's just other people liking it and sharing it it's only one side of the conversation that's being involved now it won't work for everyone if, like i say if you're a small brand you need the people who are on your side already to to kind of negate any negative effect from it but because if you go out and say something that's too controversial, you will only feel negative impacts of that statement or that action. So you need to make sure you've got enough people there that will agree with you and kind of um, enhance your message and support your message. And then you need the other side to, to prod them enough that they want to get involved and chat about that. Um, but yeah, if you want to see how this is done by the big brands, go look at um, the Conservative Party and what they do. Um, it's deliberately provocative and controversial in order to reach more people, which is their ultimate game. goal is for more people to hear their message. And the people over who disagree with them on the left will always disagree with them. And the people on the right will always agree with them. What they want is that middle ground. And the way they reach them is by getting these people to share the message and these people to share the message and they'll hit them down the middle. Um, whereas... The traditional approach would only have these guys you're only going to hit them from that side so there's going to be a big part of that middle ground that misses out on your message so yeah let me know what you think to that whether or not you agree um disagree maybe this is controversial in itself but yeah i think the tory parties as much as i don't agree with um the fact i don't think it is good quality 
and what they're putting out, it's effective. Um, I think that's where I'll leave it before we get into political territory. Um, but yeah, thank you once again for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, comment below what else you'd like me to cover and subscribe. Hit the bell notification to be the first to hear when I release new videos.